AT&T mischarges customers hepatitis A spreads in New Jersey and Monmouth University's Linda Deutsch has pledged a $1 million gift to establish an endowed scholarship fund for aspiring Monmouth journalism students. All this and more on in this episode of Hawk TV News. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hawk TV News. I'm JC Marie. And I'm Josh Chanley. Service provider AT&T has been accused of charging millions of customers for an allegedly unlimited data plan. The company is now paying a settlement of $60 million to address the federal complaint. While current and former customers will receive partial refunds, an AT&T spokesperson states that none of the allegations against the company were proven in court but they decided settling the case was the, in the best interest for their customers and their reputation. In the last 11 months in New Jersey, the number of confirmed hepatitis A infections has surged to 533 cases, including six deaths. Health officials issued a new alert that a ShopRite deli worker could have exposed people to highly infectious diseases over 18 day span in October. The New Jersey Department of Health says 332 people have required hospitalization. The infected Somerville deli worker was contagious between October 13th and October 30th. Anyone who bought food from the deli are instructed to throw it away. 1965 graduate of Monmouth University, Linda Deutsch has pledged a $1 million gift to establish an endowed scholarship fund for aspiring Monmouth journalism students. The Associate Press trial reporter Deutsch was an editor and reporter for the Outlook from 1961 to 1965. The university has dedicated the office space of the student-run newspaper, The Outlook, as the Linda Deutsch 65 Student Journalism Center. Deutsch has also been inducted into the Department of Communication Alumni Academy on November 11th. Walmart has agreed to drop its lawsuit against Tesla. Tesla's solar panel system led to fires on the roofs at at least seven Walmart locations causing millions in damage. Walmart accused Tesla of having untrained employees, careless work ethic, and poor business tactics. The two companies say that they have worked out a settlement. An unidentified object was recently found on Marvel's Eternals film. The object was reportedly found on the set in Spain's Canary Islands. Although there were reports of actors being evacuated, it was stated that no cast members were in the affected area. After the safety protocols took place, cast members returned. A man passed away on an NJ Transit train leaving New York Penn Station. The conductor announced for help after a passenger relayed a message of a man not feeling well. A doctor appeared on the scene in an attempt to save the man who was possibly suffering a heart attack. An automatic external defibrillator was, not, was used but was not successful. Music can give listeners a new experience whether it is expected or not. Manny Christian offers the, his latest music review with the Album Chronicles. Manny? As an avid hip-hop listener, I can tell you that this year has been the year for the genre to thrive. Of course, there are good albums that have dominated the charts at certain points of the year, like Revenge of the Dreamers 3 by Dreamville, Kirk by The Baby, and So Much Fun by Young Thug. An album that has captured my attention and sparked a fire in the hip-hop community is one from a very underrated rapper, I'm here to talk to you about Wale's new album title, Wow, That's Crazy. The first thing that will garner attention from new listeners is the many features on the album. The interesting thing about the features is that Wale displays his versatility with each collaboration by taking a little bit of their style and incorporating it with his own, making a perfect mix. The next thing that, that makes this album great is the pro-black agenda that he promotes. Songs such as BGM, Sue Me, and Black Bonnie are a few of the examples illustrating how he uplifts black women, show his support for black owned businesses, and praises his black love. Wale also discusses the struggles of growing up as a black youth in America in the two part song, Love Me Nina, Semi Automatic. In the first song, he briefly touches on all of the problems black youths face growing up in America and how it places stress on them and can lead them to grabbing a weapon. In the second song, he dives into how he feels about all of the stress he's faced in his life and the stress he is currently facing, causing him to compare himself to a semi-automatic weapon. Finally, the amount of songs that can get radio play on this album is outstanding. Songs such as On Chill, Routine, Pole Dancer, and BGM are songs that are radio friendly, even though they weren't made with the intent of being a radio hit. 
Also, songs such as Black Bonnie, Sue Me, Expectations, and Love, Her Fault, are also very good songs that have a chance of making the airwaves. Wale's album has the possibility of being album of the year. I would give it a rating of eight out of 10, eight and a half out of 10. Next time, I'll explain why Rhapsody is the most underrated lyricist in the hip hop game, as I give my thoughts on her newest album, Eve. We have to take a short break, but stay tuned for more Hawk TV news. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. Be gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Stars and Comcast's recent negotiations are drawing attention from the Department of Justice. Comcast and Lionsgate, the owner of Stars, were both contacted by the DOJ as a part of an informal inquiry to the two companies' contract negotiations. Lionsgate first warned Comcast customers that Xfinity users might lose access to the Stars channel if they don't strike a new deal. Comcast under pressure from cord cutters and facing growing competition from streaming apps running on platforms from Amazon, Apple, Roku, and Google. The DOJ was responsive to the request made by members of Congress and has been at, and members of Congress have been asking for information from the two parties. Social media application TikTok came under fire after the US government launched a national security review of the app's Chinese parent company. ByteDance, TikTok is a popular social media platform with the majority of its users between the ages of 16 and 24. Some U.S. lawmakers are concerned that the Chinese parent company censors content on the app or collects and exploits the data of American users. Despite this, TikTok's U.S. general manager, Vanessa Pappas, claims that no government, foreign or domestic, directs how TikTok's content is moderated. Former Vice President Joe Biden took the platform medium last week to attack Elizabeth Warren saying that she has an angry yielding viewpoint on health care. This came after Warren said she thinks Biden is running in the wrong presidential primary and that Biden was repeating Republican talking points with his criticisms on her Medicare for all plan. In Amman, Jordan, a young man from Palestinian refugee camps stabbed eight people, including four foreign tourists and their tour guide. The two 22-year-old men, Mufasa Abu Temet, is believed to have acted alone. Two of the victims were in serious condition and airlifted to a hospital. Tumet apparently acted out of desperation and he had planned on a dying during the attack and had been living in their extreme poverty. We now send it over to Steve Pompey with his look at the biggest hits and flops at the box office. Hello, movie fans. Let's get ready to reel it in with some of the biggest movies recently released. 
topping the box office in its first weekend out, the new Disney live-action film Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, has already earned about $37 million. Starring Angelina Jolie as the title character, the film is a direct sequel to the 2014 film Maleficent, with this update expanding on the story's origins. Critics are hailing Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, for its impressive cast and visuals, but panning it for the lackluster story. Personally, it just looks like another quick way for Disney to cash in on an established brand, but I could always be wrong. However, let's talk about everybody's favorite clown, Joker, which is currently sitting at number two in its third week, grossing about $30 million domestically over the weekend, but about 70, 772 million worldwide. This would set Joker on course to become the highest grossing R-rated film of all time, surpassing both Deadpool 1 and 2. Joker is being hailed by critics, some, some even saying that it could be this year's best film. I don't think they're too far off. The visuals and performance, especially Joaquin Phoenix, who stars as the title character, are some of the best I've seen all year, with the film only suffering from some weak writing here and there. Finally, not every movie can do well. Let's talk about one of the newest flops to hit our screens, Ang Lee's Gemini Man, starring Will Smith. As an older assassin ready to quit, he discovers that a younger, better clone of himself is tracking him down to kill him. In its second week, the film only grossed about $8 million and only 123 worldwide. The film is projected to have lost seven, $75 million, with critics panning it for its incredibly subpar story. The film also drew mixed response for its release in 120 frames per second, with some hailing it as a technical achievement and others saying the opposite. Personally, it seems like another gimmicky action movie that values flash over substance. And putting your movie in 60 frames per second looks bad, so I can only imagine what 120 looks like. Well, that's about it this week for Reel It In. Back to you guys at the desk. Sarah. We have to take another short break, but stay tuned for more Hawk TV news. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. Keep going with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Residents voted to give military veterans living in retirement communities property tax reductions. 75% of eligible voters approved an amendment to the state's constitution that will grant veterans a reduction on their taxes that they otherwise would not have received while living in retirement communities. According to official estimates, the reduction will cost the state somewhere between $350,000 to $550,000 annually. The Democratic Party walked away from the November 5th elections with a considerable gain across the board in key states. Their biggest victory came in Virginia, where the party seized control of the state house for the first time in over 20 years. President Trump stayed out of Virginia, endorsing only one Republican candidate who was soundly defeated in northern district of the state. The president instead focused on his efforts of the governor's race in Kentucky, where an incumbent Matt Bevin was narrowly defeated with De Democratic Attorney General Andy Beshear by about 5,000 votes. Bevin has refused to concede, citing unspecified irregularities questioned by both Democrats and Republicans. After the Nationals' World Series victory, the team visited the White House to be honored by the president. While some of the players opted to embrace the president, including catcher Kurt Suzuki, 
Others opted not to come at all, with only 18 of the team's 25-member series roster pre present. The president commended the team on a fantastic season, leading to the team's first Major League Baseball championship since 1924. Looking for something to binge on Netflix? Josh Miller has your next obsession with his review of Living With Yourself. Netflix's newest sci-fi comedy drama, Living With Yourself, stars the always lovable Paul Rudd as Miles Elliott, a middle-aged man who's hit a wall in his life in and in trying to deal with his midlife crisis, it's a little bit more than he bargained for with a new clone of himself that's better than him in almost every way. Rudd manages to do what few actors can do by playing a dual role of basically the same character. Yet each of the Miles still feel independent of each other with their own unique mannerisms and attitudes. It's never confusing for the viewers to tell the two apart, a true testament to Rudd's acting ability. Miles' wife Kate is played, by the wonderfully, is played wonderfully by Aisley B, who really captures a sense of confusion, betrayal, and uncertainty that comes with having your significant other cloned. The show itself is well paced with, with each episode lasting about 20 minutes and does a good job blending the interwoven narratives of the Mileses, as well as using flashbacks and flash forwards as a, mean to show, as a means to show what brought Kate and Miles to where they are now and tease what's coming next. The show especially thrives when showing the dichotomy between the two Miles as one succeeds in every way that the other wishes, yet still feels empty. There's one particular moment that illustrates this towards the end of the series, however, I won't be getting into spoilers. If you're a Paul Rudd fan or enjoy shows that bring into question the, the life's per, our life's purpose, I highly recommend viewing this if you're looking for a new weird comedy drama to watch in your free time. That's all for me, back to you guys at the desk. We have to take another short break, but when we return, Eddie Atkinson has an exciting recap on Mama Sports. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never remember. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay? Oh, gee. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. It's the awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, that can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Awkward. 
awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never remember. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay? All G. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. It's the awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, that can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Listen, I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked up to my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never remember. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay. All G. You all right, girl. Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. It's easy, awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, that can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. There's a hope that's waiting for you. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you.
listen, I realized that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We were from Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay. All G. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. See the awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at seizetheawkward.org. Everything starts out small. The things that hurt us, they all start from somewhere. The words we say, the things we do, they can grow into something else. What was small and innocent can become big and sometimes scary. All it takes is one comment, one picture, one video for something to catch fire. But a big problem doesn't need a big response. Not at first. Even if we don't know what to say, the eye emoji can be that first step we take. Let's all pledge to take that first small step together and change the world in a big way. I'm a witness, and so are you. Welcome back to your weekly sports update. The football team continued their hot streak with a 49-38 victory over Northern Alabama at Kessler Stadium. Quarterback Kenji Bahar continued his record-setting season by throwing for five touchdowns, 319 yards, becoming the Hawks' all-time leader in passing touchdowns. The Hawks will look to continue their undefeated streak in conference play when they travel to Campbell to take on the Camels November 16th. The women's team, soccer team was crowned conference champions with a six-goal thrashing of fellow MAC rival Fairfield at Hessfield. It was a group effort led by fifth-year senior Maddie Gibson and sophomore Lauren Carabin, each contributing two goals on a combined eight shots. Senior Lexi Palladino and sophomore Jill Conklin each contributed one goal to the effort. The MAC champions will now wait to face Brown in Rhode Island in the NCAA tournament. The field hockey team season ended 2-1 at the hands of Stanford during the America East Field Hockey Championship. The close loss at So Sweet a Cat Field ends what was a historic year for the program, appearing in the championship during their first year in the conference. With the loss, the Hawks will not receive an automatic bid for the NCAA tournament, and the season has drawn to a close. We at Hawk TV would like to congratulate the field hockey team on such a valiant run. That's all for this week's sports update. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Eddie. That's all for this week of Hawk TV News. Thank you for joining us. I'm JC. And I'm Josh Chanley. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition of Hawk TV News.